the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. All right, welcome to this week's edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wolden, and of course, I'm pleased to be joined by Greg Buchanan, the voice of the CPCA radio. How's it going? Not too bad, Moses. Excellent. Uh, things are going well for you? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the snow, but we'll live with it. All right. Uh, well, nobody likes the snow, really, <laughs> uh, except maybe for you, Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm Radke, uh, you are the marketing business guy for the Lloydminster Bobcats. How's it going? Good, good. Yeah, snow is here, so it's hockey season, baby. Exactly. So let's see if they, the Bobcats can start rolling here in the month <laughs> of October. But let's talk about baseball, of course. Uh, once you start getting into the fall, we've got to talk about the fall classic. And the San Francisco Giants and St. Louis Cardinals played Game 7 with a chance to go to the World Series to face the Tigers. Uh, San Francisco down 3-1, uh, has now tied a MLB record for uh, most consecutive wins uh, while in your elimination games with six. And they did it in convincing fashion, outscoring the Cardinals 20-1 to in this series. Pitching was great. Hitting, got timely hits. Uh, if you're Hunter Pence, you got three hits on one crack. So that also <laughs> means you got some good luck on your, on your side, too. Uh, but let's talk about th the San Francisco Giants. So winning this game convincingly, 9-0, uh, really proving a point, uh, going to the World Series. What did it for them against the Cards down 3-1? Was it pitching or hitting? Well, I think it was a combination, like you said. Uh, they had timely hitting. Good pitching and a little bit of luck, which you always need. Um, just an all-around clutch effort by the entire team. Like, it really comes down to every pitch in baseball in the playoffs, and they came through. So, perfect 6-0. and It's going to be tough to beat them. And you look at last night, though. St. Louis did have their chances early on in that game. Uh, Could have made it a close game early. Didn't capitalize on their opportunity. San Francisco made some great defensive plays and, and bailed them out. And then they just kind of rolled from there. In the last three games, San Francisco looks unbeatable. But uh, up next is Detroit, and it's not going to be easy. Did the cards run out of ideas, or was it just more so that the breaks didn't go their way? You guys mentioned that a little bit. But it felt like they had no clue. Once Loesch, their main guy, was struggling, they tried to throw in somebody else in there, and things just continued to snowball. Was it uh, something that they ran out of ideas, or was it just more so that the breaks didn't go their way for games, I guess, five, six, seven? I think it was kind of a bit of a, bit of a combination. Uh, you know, sometimes you'd St. Louis goes into that, and they have a bit of a game plan, uh, how it's going to develop in the game. and. If it doesn't go their way, then they kind of scramble to try to, you know, find a void that's going to sit in the middle relief. And your middle relief, instead of coming in the fifth or sixth inning, is coming in the third inning. And that changes the game plan completely. Yeah, for sure. I think early in that game, like you said, a few bounces here and there, and it's a completely different game. But if you've just lost the last two games, it's now tied 3-3. And you're down early. You're hitting the panic button, right? Like, oh, this story again. How are we going to come back? And then just like that, you're down. Five run, third inning, and it's pretty much over. Well, guys like Matt Cain, uh, Vogel Song, phenomenal in terms of their uh, uh, pitching. And you also have Barry Zito, who uh, yeah. has done very well. And we mentioned before the cast that you know Zito wasn't on the roster when they won it two years ago. So that, that says a lot about what he's done to kind of improve his game. Going to the World Series, he's going to be facing a tough team in the Tigers who have a very similar combination, have great hitting and power with the guys that like Miguel Cabrera, Delman Young. You have Prince Fielder. Um, and then you also bring in their pitching staff, which is led by Justin Verlander. How do you compare those two teams and who would you give the slightest advantage to or if any advantage to? Because it looks kind of even if you look at it on paper. I think Detroit's a lot deeper. I think Detroit, you look through their lineup and they can go deep in their lineup. They can come off the bench and they have power off the bench. They have uh, great middle relief, great closers and their starting pitching is probably one of the best in the game. So San Francisco right now, in a way, they're wearing the glass slipper. And, uh, you know, nobody expected them to come back against St. Louis to win three straight and win that series. So you wonder if that glass slipper is going to finally fall and break off. Yeah, Detroit doesn't seem like the kind of team that's going to choke the same way St. Louis did. They were up 3 nothing against the Yanks, and they closed it out no problem, right? So I think I'm with you on that one. I like Detroit. Um, San Fran, they just played last night. they got to play tomorrow night again already. But you also got to remember, they get home field advantage, yeah, and it's big. Sure. And as... As much as we complain about the All-Star Game and you know, give whoever wins the All-Star Game gets to host the World Series, you think about what the San Francisco Giants have done, not only in the National League and winning it, but they also helped their cause. Matt Cain was a start in that All-Star Game. You look at Miguel Cabrera, uh, or um, Melky Cabrera, despite 
you know, obviously the steroid issue. Um, <laughs> and, and then, of course, uh, Sandoval, another great guy who uh, also helped this cause. This is a team that seems to be, um, I guess, a team you wouldn't want to underestimate. You talk about Detroit looking like the favorite, but considering you have the National League, the Giants having home field, that's got to play a big part. You talk about the cold. They got the rain and they got, uh, I guess, the heat out in San Fran. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's exactly heat. You're on the bay there. I've watched some games in San Francisco way back in the day. I saw Houston with Terry Poole in the lineup. That kind of dates me. But uh, it is a cold ballpark to watch in. If that uh, the wind coming off the bay and it, it's chilly, it's not going to be the snow in Detroit that they could be facing. But, uh, yeah, I can, home conditions are going to be key for San Francisco. Important for the first couple of games is going to determine where the Giants are going to sit in that series. Yeah. I think that you have to at least give them. Uh, it kind of cancels each other out when they have that. Uh, well, Malcolm, I just want to talk about the New York Yankees with you, and we'll kind of move on to that quickly. Uh, disastrous postseason, uh, lowest batting average in Yankee playoff history. It was atrocious at best. Um, where do their, where does their focus turn to now um, that uh, you have a guy like A-Rod, who's very lethargic, doesn't really care. Even right. though he wants to stay there, they kind of want to get him out. Yeah. Um, you got issues with CeCe Sabathia, um, of course, that he's got to check out his doctor. That's becoming an issue now. Where do you go if you're the Yankees? I don't know. I have no idea, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing the Yankees sink like that. Um, you know, they, they come up against a little bit of adversity with the Tigers, and they just absolutely fall apart. Um, I think with guys like A-Rod, they got that superstar celebrity mindset and really not the best dressing room, I wouldn't think. So, But you're the Yankees. You have money. You're going to buy the best players. It's, it's a pretty straightforward solution if you're them. Like who's available? Let's give them the most money and go from there. That's what they're gonna do. I don't know if that's the best. So solution, like Josh Hamilton, maybe? Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> give David Ortiz a call. <laughs> I don't know. You get out the checkbook. Start paying guys again. You know. Uh, you look at their lineup, and they do have to make some wholesale changes. Uh, the American League East is always tough to win in. And, Especially now. Oh, it's gonna be tougher next season. And uh, you look at it, A Rod. Yeah, he's likely played his last game. He's got a few good phone numbers probably from the dugout, but. Uh, <laughs> It'd be interesting to see what happens to the Yankees. They have to make a lot of changes. They always talk about managing. It's not about uh, the X's and O's, but about dealing with personalities. And uh, they got a few personalities with the Yankees. All right, quickly from you guys, one comment. Um, where do they focus on, pitching or hitting for next season to get those players? I say pitching. Say I, think, pitching? I think championships all start in pitching. Okay, and yourself, Malcolm? Yeah, I think he's right. All right, well, we'll see what happens to him in free agency. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more Gloves Are Off. Mm -hmm.